Go! What up, y'all, and welcome back to another one. Yes, we're in the lodge, and I know a lot of you had heard already, but we have dates available, and we are taking on uh, clients. If you're interested in booking a hunt here at Sandhill Flyways this upcoming season, all you got to do is go to sandhillflyways.com. It's always linked down below. Fill out the inquire to book form. Before we get into this video, um, I'll tell you why we're doing this video here in a minute, but before we get into it, check this out. And before we check this out, I have to remind you guys on these Foul Fridays, y'all, uh, I want to open your guys' mail on these videos. So just remember, I still have a P.O. box. That P.O. box is also linked down below. Uh, send whatever you want, uh, just as long as it's safe, legal, appropriate, you know what I mean? Like a lot of you sent so many of these antique decoys. Some of you have sent some of these calls, like this one right here, and I think both of these, mm-hmm. And actually, all of these up here, you all sent as well. All these antique decoys, these plaques and pictures, this. This is actually from my buddy, uh, awesome tattoo artist up in Canada. Yeah, you can send whatever you want. Like I said, it is linked down below. The old P.O. box. One other thing, and last and final thing. Uh-huh. Y'all have seen the camo ones that I've been wearing, but check these bad boys out. Check out the insides. Uh-huh. Ducks. Uh-huh. Absolute beauties. And then look at these. I don't know if you guys have seen these yet. Uh-huh. Duckswaterfowl.com. Go over there, check them out. Awesome dog bumpers. Me and Frederick have been using them. I love them. I love the shoes. The shoes actually dropped June 22nd, just to let you know. But yesterday I was going through my direct messages on Instagram and I got an interesting one. One that sparked my interest to do this video. And how it read was, hey Bobby, I know that you're always, uh, you know, ranting and raving about your SB3. I know it's, that's your favorite gun. Uh, is there anything about that gun that doesn't allow it to rust like all the others? Or what's the best gun I can buy that doesn't rust? And it got me thinking, I'm like, that's an interesting question. I haven't showed you guys the boat on the YouTube channel yet. I'm sorry, I know I've been holding out on y'all, but when we do it, it's gonna be great. I love the boat, I've taken it out twice now, beauty. All right, back to my original story. What gun is the best one on the market that doesn't rust? Okay, so that's a good question. Here's a good question. And this is my reply. Guys, listen. I know they make, a, they make something for everything now. Well, this product is better at this, and this is because of, this is why. Or this product is amazing, it's new futuristic new technology that doesn't allow it to rust. Guys, first off, if you want a gun that doesn't rust, don't get it wet. Number two, if you want a shotgun that doesn't rust, you should probably buy one that's uh, got a pattern on it, like a camo one or something. Uh, I believe they probably protect them a little more, that, that camo paint covering, synthetic, whatever that is. I, for one, don't like camo guns. Uh, they really messed my eyesight up looking down the barrel. That's just me. I like to look down a black rib. What I'm getting at, every shotgun, and this is why I grabbed this. When I read the comment, oh my God. See, this is unlike me. Very unlike me. This gun got wet. I was afraid of this. The gun got wet, and now it's hard to get the choke out. Because I did not do my maintenance, my due diligence to protect my gun, all right? Guns are expensive. This, I don't, I don't recommend doing this. Actually, let's uh, put a towel over the choke. I don't recommend doing this. I don't recommend letting your gun get to this point. And a lot of you know what I'm doing. A lot of yours are seized in there and you can't even get them out. Believe me, I've been down that road. And uh, what I'm getting at, guys, if you want a shotgun that doesn't rust, because we are duck hunters, we get our guns wet all the time in the marsh, 
it rains on them, you drop it in the lake, you fall in your waders or in the pond and you drop your gun, right? Any of the above, especially just normal rain, don't forget that it got soaked that day. Completely soaked. So if you get home and you're just too tired to deal with it, number one rule that every new shotgun hunter, duck hunter breaks and how you mess up your gun, how you get all that surface rust and everything that won't come off, you put your wet gun into a gun case, okay? And a lot of times the inside of the gun case is wet too, or the whole gun case is wet because it got rained on as well. Get what I'm saying? Get where I'm going with this? If your gun case is wet inside and out and your gun is wet inside and out, I probably wouldn't put the gun in the case. Just my two cents. Now, if you're in a state that you have to always have a gun in a case, which there are some here in Kansas you don't, um, I understand. You have to put it in the case. But when you get home, take it out. Don't forget about it. That's where people mess up. You forget about it. You leave it in your truck. You leave it in the back seat, in the case, wet, okay? What you can do if you don't have the time to tend to it and completely break it down, what you can do is just rack the action back. You can take some lube, which I don't need to real quick, psh, spray it in there real fast, and then just turn it upside down and leave it upside down somewhere so all the water drains out the tube or out the barrel or wherever, wherever that water is, you know. Some guns uh, in the uh, shoulder stock here, can actually hold a ton of water in here. The only way you're gonna get it out is probably by doing this and let it just drain out over time, right? It might take a few hours. So, number one rule, leave your action open, get it out of the case, let it dry. Um, me, personally, if it's really wet and I do have a little bit of time, I'll dry it off real quick and then I'll just take, again, some lube and black gun wipe it down real quick just to get it lubed back up. I can come back and really do the fine touches on it later. But just like this choke, I did not, it's been a while since it's been clean, check it out. Looks pretty darn bad. So, takes two seconds, whoops. Uh, takes two seconds guys, and shotguns are way too expensive not to take care of. It's just the simple facts, you know what I mean? It really is, it costs us a lot of money and as gun owners, we should know how to take care of our weapons and our guns. Uh, you know, just being uh, an American. I know all of you were probably expecting the new latest and greatest gun to hit the market that doesn't rust. It doesn't exist. It's up to you guys. Sometimes money does not pay for everything. You know what I mean? Sometimes... Oh, I'm just, I'm a Tesla. It'll drive itself, right? Not a shotgun, not a shotgun. It doesn't clean itself. It doesn't drive itself. It damn sure doesn't operate itself, okay? So stop being lazy. At the end of the day, that was a lazy question to ask, right? I'm not being rude. I'm really not. It was a good question because it notifies all you new gun owners how important it is to take care of your shotgun because if you do not you'll ruin it in a hurry and these things are supposed to last you a very long time they're not cheap you know what i mean like y'all know i've told you a thousand times before i put the choke back in there i'll go get a little lube on it then throw it in just so you keep those threads lubed basically it keeps it from seizing up gets me by till the next time i forgot to clean it for six months. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry to burst your bubble. I'm sorry, I'm an ass. Uh, I know, I faked having a gun that was absolutely unrustable. It's my only way to get the point across. I, I, it gets old like hearing people go, well, don't they make something for that? Well, don't they make something for that? Well, I heard that they made something for that problem. They're always, there isn't always gonna be a solution, an easy solution, taking money and new technology to fix one itty bitty issue. That requires your time, your attention, your due diligence,
to take care of that gun. And that's a simple fact. All my beginners out there, chalk it up. Uh, all you guys that are like, I haven't cleaned my gun in three years or since the day I bought it. I know, I get it. I understand some guns operate like that. But my buddy Kurt, y'all know him, old Kurt dog, old war pig, killer Kurt himself, who does all the taxidermy in here. Last year was the last year that he was able to brag about not cleaning his, I believe it's an SX3. It built up enough just dirt, grime, grit, and all the working in the sides of the bolt that it ended up breaking the internals of that gun. So yeah, it still might shoot every time. It still might go click, but one day it's gonna build up in there and it's gonna break your gun because you haven't cleaned it. Kurt, I'm not going after you, you're my boy. But it's just another example of what will happen if you don't take care of your stuff. I'm not gonna drag this one out. Remember the PO box is always down below. Send me something. Let's start opening up some stuff at the beginning of the video. Thank you all for being here. Subscribe if you haven't. We're gonna be uh, doing Foul Fridays every single week. I just put up a magnet fishing video, a starling hunt, all kinds of stuff. Still waiting on the pigeon hunts to fire up when the wheat comes off. Hit that little notification bell down there. But until next time. I'm angry, but girl, I ain't even getting mad. Cause I've been getting laid back, baby. You should know that I don't need your criticism, pessimism.